I know you're very humble about this. It's heroic. It's heroic what you are doing and how you're living your life and how you're helping. But I see how you kind of shy away well, from I that. Say, I mean, at a time when, when, when people are, are putting their lives on the line, particularly for, for our country and for freedom, and, and those are heroes. So it, it's not just humility, it's perspective. But putting perspective on his situation wasn't easy when he was first diagnosed. It was 1991, while shooting the movie Doc Hollywood. He noticed his pinky twitching and knew something wasn't right. But I, I thought it was a muscle pull. I, I didn't know what it was. Then they sent me to a neurologist, and, and then he just put it out there, said, you have young onset Parkinson's. And I might as well have said, you, you're an alien. We've discovered you have three brains and two hearts or something. I mean, it's just really confusing. For seven years, he kept his diagnosis a secret, continuing to work while hiding his daily struggle with a disease that is progressive. It's a big commitment to give information to people that's going to change the way they look at you and, and see you. And then it's a long journey to get to the point where you say, well, in a way, it doesn't matter what they think of me. In 1998, he went public, allowing the world to witness his disease. The Michael J. Fox Foundation was born. To date, they've raised $450 million, but their mission is greater than money. Each year, they receive thousands of letters from people affected by Parkinson's, expressing gratitude for the community it has created. And the foundation's initiative outreach now leads the way to advances and discoveries. Science is hard. I mean, like we all know that from school. Science is hard. One of our big uh, uh, projects is, is to find a biomarker for Parkinson's, which is to be able to identify the disease before symptoms are evident, which may not be a cure, but it's, it's, it's certainly a, a great goal in the meantime. And their latest endeavor, smartwatches. Partnering with Intel, Michael's foundation is making use of the latest technology to measure the effect of Parkinson's on a patient's daily life. What do you think are the biggest misconceptions about Parkinson's? People often say to me, they know someone who died from Parkinson's. And, and I always say, they died with Parkinson's. They didn't die from Parkinson's, they died with Parkinson's, and they lived with Parkinson's. And, and it's important to live with Parkinson's. Which Michael points out with grace and humor in so many of his recent television roles. Yeah, it's, it's different for everybody, and, and for me, I don't always reflect what I'm thinking or feeling by the way my face reacts or the way my voice reacts or the way my body reacts. Yeah, that's right, because we, we, people do make a lot about a bo body language. Yeah, mm. I, my, I, my body language stutters. <laughs> your body language stutters. Your, your humor and optimism, where does it come from? I mean, like, people, is it something that people can learn? Is it something just who you are? I, I, I mean, I'd have to say it probably came from my, my, my Irish mother. But mom was always sunny and happy and, and, and convinced that things were going to turn out for the best. Michael says his wife and four children also fueled his positive outlook. In fact, living optimistically with Parkinson's informs the way he parents. His children have grown up with a mantra he imparts to them every single day. I used to drive my kids crazy when they go to school and I'd say, choose happiness, choose to be happy. And they, they, they want to go, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Somebody that is watching and is newly diagnosed, Right. And knowing what you do now and the advances that are being made, what do you say to somebody that's facing something like this? I would say just take it easy. Just This is a long journey and the rest of life goes on and, and you want to do your research and, and, and talk to your doctor and, and figure out a plan to deal with it and then live your life. And so what's next for you, Michael J. Fox? What do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. I, I, taller. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be in this position, and, and it's just important to, 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 to push forward. Well, I have to say congratulations on living life on your terms, for being a beacon of hope for many of us, and for being a fine example in many ways. And congratulations and continue blessings on all that you do. Right back at you. <laughs> Thank you.